in it. Amen. How many are thankful for strength in your body? Amen. As the Lord saw you through the night, no sickness coming upon your body. Amen. We thank God for being in the land of the living. Amen. We thank you for being able to breathe in and out. Amen. We thank you for strength in our limbs today. We don't take our health for granted. Amen. Especially in a time so serious as a global pandemic. But how many know that we serve a God that's above all? Amen. He's a God that's above all everything. He has the power to take care of everything. All we have to do is put our trust in him. Amen. This morning I'm privileged to read the word of God coming out of the gospel of Matthew. St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. lengthy I'm going to be reading verses 14 to 30 so just bear with me amen, amen. but how many of you know that it's the word that set us free it's the word that deliver us it's the word that get our flesh in alignment with the yes. with the yes. will of God amen yes. Yes. it's the word that makes us do right it's the word yes. that makes us righteous yes. amen. amen Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30 and it reads, for the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged into the earth, and he hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and I went and I hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that it is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou owest thou for, therefore to have put many money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should, I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that shall be given, he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let us bow our head as we go into the throne of grace. Oh, Father, we just thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made. We just thank you for being the phenomenal God, yes. the omnipotent God that you are, the great 
I am, God. We thank you that all power is in your hand. We thank you that your word is settled both in heaven and in earth. We thank you that you are the author and the finisher of our faith today. Oh, God, we give you praise, God, that we are a community of believers, God, that we have come together as one, joining in praise and worship and adoration to you, our God. Oh, God, we give you praise for each family, each household represented here this morning. We thank you for our leader, the visionary of this ministry, the watchman of our soul, God. We thank you, God, that as you cover him and keep him in good health and keep him safe, our first lady, the, ch the children, those administrations in their respectable places. God, we thank you that you are above COVID-19. You are above COVID-19. You are above this plague, God. And God, if we could just reach up and trust you, God, that you will keep us in perfect health. Oh, God, give us a spirit of praise and thanksgiving like never before in this season. As we go into this fourth quarter to end this year, God, put a fire in us. Put a revival in us. Revive everything that is dead and barren in us, God. Oh, Holy Ghost, I ask that you will visit us this morning and breathe on us. Breathe on your people like never before. For you said that we shall receive power after that which the Holy Ghost has come upon us. And Holy Ghost, we ask you to come upon us this morning. We ask you to breathe on us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. And we should be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that's within me, bless his holy name. Bless you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. All that's within me, bless his holy name. Come on, bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that's within us, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul, all that's within me will bless his holy name. Because the Lord is good. As a matter of fact, he's great. And he's greatly to be praised. Come on, lift him. We're not the dying. We've come to lift him up. We've come to declare that he is God. He is Jehovah who reigns forever and ever. He's a person. The great I am, the mighty God, in whom we stand. Remember, come on. Jehovah reigns, Jehovah reigns forever. He reigns, Jehovah reigns forever. He reigns, Jehovah reigns forever.
that he's done we adore and love him for who he is and he's the I got the Yeah, that's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's your moment. That's your space for praise. Hallelujah. We lift him today because he's great and mighty. He's deserving of all of our worship, all of our praise. Hallelujah. Hope you're being filled and refreshed this morning. Hallelujah. The word is coming today. Amen. To bless our hearts. And even as we seek the Lord this evening. Hallelujah. I know that God is going to do something supernatural in this day because he's a supernatural, amazing, and mighty God who we love so much. You are Lion of Judah, Lion of Judah. Come forth, come forth and take us in. Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah, come on, come on, and take us in. Lion of Judah, Lion of Judah.
Lord help me say, I can't find nobody that can do me like Jesus. Listen, when folks, the Holy Ghost put down in my soul, this is overcomers October. And I need you to know, I don't know how the enemy has fought you all year, but God says, you still in the game. Look at your neighbor and say, you still in the game. Ha! I know it's the fourth quarter. I know you're looking at the clock. But I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Because my Bible tells me that the God we serve is still able. When there's still time on the clock, there's still a God above the clock. And he's able. Yes, he's able. Whether you believe it or not, he's still able. He's still able. Whether you receive it or not, he's still able. Whether you believe it or not, he's still able. Whether you receive it or not, he's still able. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, clap those hands under victory. Clap those hands under victory. Let the devil know you still defeated. Let the devil know you still defeated. But God is able. And I need you to know not only is God able, but there's some things you, there's some things you are able to do. Look over the neighbor. I know we look at two masks, but look over the neighbor and say, you got power to do that too. You got power to do that. He said, I can do all things through Christ. To, that strengthen me. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you, you may not have the strength to do what I do. But there's some things God is strengthening you that you got to do. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to do it. You got to use that power for that. You got to use that anointing for that. God is able. God is able. My, 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 my God. Father, we thank you that you are able. You are able. And we're not afraid to say we will not give up on you because you're not giving up on us. God, will you bless the house? Bless that one who needs to hear this prayer today. Father, you have shifted even the service so far to begin to speak prophetically into someone. Whether they be here in the sanctuary or whether they be watching at home, there's nothing our God cannot do. So, Father, we lift up the doctor's report and say, God, you're able to fix it. We say, oh, God, we look at the checkbook balance and we say, you're able to do it. Father, we look at it, raising our children in this time and we lift them up to you and say, you're able, oh, God. So, Father, this morning, we ask you by your great grace and power that you would continue to touch, oh God, those who may not be able to be touched again, Sister Latoya, Latoy, oh God. Thank you by you continue to touch, oh God. Thank you by you continue to lift up Brother Basil, oh God. Watching even this morning, oh God. I pray now, God, for Sister Loretta's daughter, Sherelle, oh God. Father, we say, God, would you touch her, oh God. Father, all across this city, all across this state, all across this world, families are grieving. Would you be the God of all comfort? To these, oh God, with tears in their eyes, help them to lift their hands and say, thank you, Lord. Only you can do that, God. But Father, we pray for every breast cancer survivor. Father, in this one, we thank you that, God, you move some cases, miracles, sometimes medicine, but all the glory goes to you. Father, we pray for our sisters. We pray for men who have it as well. That Father, God, they just got the report. But I pray this prayer will give them some cause to rejoice, oh God, that God is still able to heal cancer. Father, I thank you that you're able to heal whatever ails. And today, even as we prepare for communion, we thank you that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastised when our peace was upon you and by your stripes we healed. Father, we thank you that healing is still the children's bread. Father, I pray now that you heal. Someone right now online is tormented in their mind. Be now their mind regulator. Someone today has a broken heart. God, be their heart fixer today. I pray now, oh God, that again that you bless those in Haiti, those in Afghanistan, those in regions of the world that have been affected by disaster, oh God. I pray, oh God, they won't be distraught, but they'll come to you. I pray for those refugees in Texas. That, Father God, we may not even know where they are. God, you know where they are. Watch over them. 
We continue to pray for nurses and doctors and our teachers, oh God. We pray for our law enforcement, oh God. Watch over them and keep them in the covering of your great grace. God, only you can do it. And Father, for these things, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. Now, Father, again, as we close out this fourth quarter, we start off this month by saying thank you for your grace and mercy. It was your grace and mercy that brought us this far. Father, will you help us to finish strong? Help us, oh God, for your glory and for your honor. It's in Jesus' great and majestic name we do pray. Amen. Will you give the Lord a hand and clap of praise? You may be seated. Thank you so much. You look so wonderful this morning at our 930 worship experience. We will be holding this service in lieu of two services on Sunday. So we want you to make sure you let your friends and loved ones know we will not monopolize your day. But as you see, we want to do our very best to usher you into the presence of the Lord so that you can truly uh, be the Lord. Listen, on your way out, please make sure you go by the uh, piano. There's a wonderful little sheet with all of the announcements. October is a full month of ministry. And we don't want you to miss anything. Tonight at 6 p.m., we will be back for Overcomers Revival. The Lord has just kind of put this in my heart for the theme. I'm asking all who can, please come back. Please, please, please come back. Again, you know how we do it. We don't hold you long, but we're going to have a good time in the Lord. And I believe God's got something great in mind. Listen, this Tuesday starts Children's Church Online again. We ask you to avail your children to the Children's Church. Uh, as you know, we do it as well during the service, and we need live volunteers for our children's church and we will be uh, indoctrinated with well, this uh, induction uh, uh, in, uh, recruiting some of you will be forcefully recruited god bless you gonna be recruited uh to go and work with our children at children's church and i believe you're gonna be blessed second wednesday in the month we will be at the palms as you know every second wednesday we go to the palm apartments right there uh, right across from true vine to do bible study this month we will be doing also a presentation with, I think, Holy Cross Hospital. We need your help. Men, we are in charge of that night. So I need all my brothers, if you can, to meet us there at uh, 6.30. I think that's usually the time we meet. We meet at 6 o'clock, 6.30. 6.30, okay. And we do it for one hour, and I believe you'll be blessed. Next Sunday, we're going to change the title. We call it Family and Friends Day. Uh, as we're talking about overcoming, next week I have a sermon on overcoming some things that relate to family. But I want to change next Sunday from Family and Friends Day to Sons and Daughters Day. I want you to take the time to invite sons and daughters, people who claim you as their mama, auntie, grandma. I said, listen, come on, son, come on, daughter. I want you to come to church with me, and I really believe God's going to bless. I feel the Lord pushing something into my spirit that I believe will be blessed. The 24th, which is the fourth Sunday, is our Pastors and Ministers Appreciation Sunday. As you know, I've shared with you that because I'm the state bishop, I do not require a, a pastor's appreciation, but I do want to honor the ministers who help me do what I do all across this state. And so I'm asking you right now, to set aside a seat of $75 to be a blessing to our team. I get to travel. I get to do what I do. And people literally, somebody said, man, you make it look so easy. It is easy because I have a very efficient team. And so we want to sow seed into their lives, and that is on the 24th. And then on the 31st, which is, they call it Halloween, uh, we're going to ask you to do something. Uh, yeah, maybe the day you want to be in a biblical costume that day. I got something the Holy Ghost going to put in my heart. But, but the, we want the babies to dress up in biblical costumes on that day. And we're going to do our trunk or treat immediately after service on that Sunday. So bring your candy, bring all your candy wrapped up, and on the way out, your babies get it. If you choose to do trunk or treat, we will not do it uh, as large as we've done in the past. But our sister organization friend, Pastor Tony Guadagnino, at, uh, no, right up the street right there, the Christian Love Fellowship, uh, they're going to be doing it in their parking lot. They've invited us. As you know, that's Fifth Sunday, so I don't know if we're going to have a Fifth Sunday union, uh, but I did want to make sure if you were in the area, please avail yourself to that. If you're interested in that, please let us know so we can let them know you're coming. I believe you'll be blessed by that. And then as well, to all of our collegiate students, I heard last Sunday was phenomenal. Can we give everyone a hand who was here last Sunday? Amen. Listen, every fourth Sunday, I need you to hear this. Every fourth Sunday, we want to feed our collegiate students, and we're asking for those of you who who cook well, many of you do, as I can attest, to help us with those meals. One of the students called and said, that food was banging. I don't know what that means, but I guess that was good. All right, I don't know. So, uh, so I praise the Lord for banging food. I guess that's a beautiful thing. 
but and we want all of our college students, to those of you watching online, if you have a student that's at FAU, Lynn University, Palm Beach State, Broward, uh, please let us know. We want to engage your students, to your students, to those of you who are in college. Bishop Pelt won't be no private investigator, but I want to be your private pastor. All right? All right, so I want you to know that we love you. I've been in college. Some of y'all going to school, like that's the best plan to be on. Go to school like Lady Pelt. Go to school. Don't be like Bishop. Don't be just at school. Amen, amen. I, amen. I was just at school. <laughs> so, mama, I, I got, I got, mama, I got out twice. Because my mama really get mad when I said, she goes, what were you doing in school? I was at school. That's all you need to know. God bless you. That's all you need. Listen, and one of the things we're doing in the month of October, we're starting a wonderful book study for our collegiate students starting on the 14th by Jackie Hill Perry, Holier Than Thou. I believe you'll be blessed by that event. Listen, just a few more announcements and I'm out your way. Men, tomorrow is Man Up Monday, 6 o'clock, uh, 7 o'clock, I'm sorry, and we want you to be a part of that. And Lady Pelts wants to remind you of prayer line. I do always tell you, the bishop uh, sometimes gets a little get sleepy, but I, I thank those of you who get up at 5 in the morning, Monday and Tuesday for prayer. Bless his holy name. Y'all pray, saints, pray. Pray, pray to the Lord. Listen, our girls club will be having a wonderful meetup uh, this Saturday at John McKeithen Park starting at 10 a.m. We will have fresh air and social distance, and so we want you to be a part of that as we are preparing, and as you see, we're doing slowly but surely putting all of our pieces back together so that we can do ministry. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you in this ministry too. I really want to challenge us as we're talking about our theme for this month, Overcomers October. I need everyone to be a contributor, not just a consumer. And I challenge you, there is something that you can do. I'm grateful for that. That lets me know that you love God more than you love me. When you get to heaven, you ain't getting in because of Pastor Pell. You're getting in because of the blood of Jesus. And one of the ways you show that you love Jesus is to support his church, his bride, and how he is to be blessed. Listen, if your birthday is in the month of October, all October birthdays, please stand. No, don't play, don't play myself for them. Don't play, don't be playing. <laughs> it's October, don't play. Now listen, I love y'all, but y'all don't get no song. We, we praying this this month. We got to pray for real. This got look 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 what your month got in. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. But I don't want to let the record know. We ain't gonna get no song. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Listen, are there any wedding anniversaries this month? Any wedding anniversaries this month? You scared? All right, all right, all right. Listen. I know it's somebody anniversary this month. Come on down here to the middle. Not only is that anniversary, but if you see this wonderful couple has been blessed, they got a wonderful new house up in Port St. Lucie. They're not going to make that, like Luther said, a house is not a home. A chair, just a chair. But it's something special with both of y'all sitting there. Yes, yes. It's my honor to say, you may kiss your husband, you may kiss your wife. Yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. Brother Richard, you broke her down. She had to clap. Well, she gave you a clap after that point. That's all right. Brother Richard, that's all right now. Listen, we love you to all of you. May the Lord bless you. <laughs> Listen, we have some wonderful people that are with us for the next few months, as you know. Uh, the beautiful thing about being the bishop is I do have some executive privileges. In the house, we have four individuals who are going through our calling and affirmation studies. Uh, if they would please stand. If you're going to the camps, would you please stand? Don't be nervous. I think I got everybody. No, you stand. All right. <laughs> What's this bear at? Oh, she's trying to sneak out here. Listen, you will notice these people will be doing some wonderful things as part of our camp study. Sister Tracy will be taking her test for her Exhorter license coming up. Uh, amen. Uh -uh, no. But we also have the privilege again of being the master pastor of a wonderful couple who will be here for MIP. And I'm asking them to stand at this time. Now listen, don't y'all get nervous. Come on, y'all come on up here on the stage. Come on up here. Y'all come on up. Bring them, bring them on up. Bring them on up here right quick. Y'all be with me. Just say, I promise you, I'll get, you, I'll get us out of here in a good time. Now, we have shared custody of this couple. Sister Trace, y'all give me a mic for them. Uh, we have shared custody of them. They'll be with us in Bishop Gowdy up at Delray. Uh, so, uh, so the record is staring. The, the husband would tell me 
to tell you first off, he ice cold. That's all I'm going to tell you. Everybody right there, ice cold. That's all y'all need to know right there, he ice cold. But number two, he would tell you, his wife is in the internship program. He's here to support her. But y'all know how that works. If she in, guess what? He in too. All righty. All right. I'm going to have her come and greet you and have them come and greet you. And I want you to put your hands together for our MIP students for the next nine months. Come on, daughter. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I like to worship. Amen. And I am enjoying myself thus far. And I'm just giving God thanks. I'm giving him praise, honor, and glory for allowing me to be in the MIP and allow me to be here with um, Bishop Pell and First Lady Pell and all of Radiant Living. Amen. You've been so warm and so welcome already. And we want to thank you. I'm just here to serve. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As Bishop would say, I'm a little ice cold. <laughs> but uh, it's wonderful to be here, to be with you beautiful people. And um, God will bless us. And by the way, my name is Deacon Claude Lincoln from Faith Deliverance from Riviera Beach, Florida. One of the things at MIP, they will probably be doing a little bit of everything. So you will see them just support them and encourage them. I want to say to all of the ladies as well, as you see here, we do not believe in any discriminatory practices. The Bible said in the last hour, for my spirit upon all flesh. And we truly do affirm that ladies can have a call on their lives as well. And so we are so thankful that to Charlene and my right brother here is here going to be with us for the next few months. They'll be in and out. They will, they're being introduced today, but they'll be with Bishop Gotti for the month of October. They will be with us for the whole month of November, and we will be working with them. I hope that you guys enjoy us. I hope that I don't be too wild and too crazy, and I hope that you'll learn some great things. Last thing I want to do before the praise team comes, I want to say thank you for your support and giving. I thank you for how you faithfully have been working with us. I need you to be faithful. In this last quarter, I want to challenge you with something. I was in a debate this week, did not mean to get into it, just kind of seemed to fall into it, of the issue of money and ministry. And people always want things from their ministry, but they fail to understand the money it takes to do that ministry. One of the things I can assure you at Radiant is that I don't live a secret life. I don't have a secret wife. I have a call from God to do the things of God with the money that God's people give to us. And I do believe as we are moving very, very swiftly to what God is trying to do for us, it will come to pass if we would just be faithful. If you're not a tither, I want you to know I'm going to do a series on tithing. But I'm not trying to make you be compelled. I want you to be convinced that tithing is right. It is biblical. And whether it would just so happen I would bump my head and try to misuse the money, God would judge me openly. He would bring me to an open shame for the misuse of God's people's money. But it also requires that you have faith to believe that God, you can take this seed and you can meet every need of my church. Listen, in this fourth quarter, I'm challenging every member of Radiant. If you've never tithed all year, I need you to be consistent for this fourth quarter. And I promise you, as I believe the Holy Ghost has spoken to me very clearly and passionately, we're about to see overcomers in things in our lives. This fourth quarter, God is about to blow our minds. So if you would, on the way out, as you know, to give, please do so. To those watching online, you can give through our many platforms, PayPal, Cash App. You can give through Snail Mail, P.O. Box 305, Deerfield Beach, Florida, 33441. Listen, I thank you for your time and attention today. The praise team's coming. I'll be back with our word for the day.
Come on, put those hands together. Come on, you're more than a conqueror this morning. Don't you settle for less because you've been made for more. You are more than a conqueror through him who loved you. And you don't have to take down, you don't have to back up. But you sure got to be what God has called you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Father, will you now touch my mind, touch my mouth, touch these next few ministry moments. Father, help someone to know that they're more than a conqueror through you. Through your son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, let now the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeem, and all who love the Lord, said amen. Amen. Listen, you don't have to stand for the reading I'm going to go right into, but look at your neighbors and neighbor. There's a responsibility of having resources. You may be seated. Because we have communion. I want to make sure we take the time to fellowship the Lord at the Lord's table. Tonight I'll start more so the overcomers, but the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, before we get into tonight, he said, I need to close with one last read. Everyone say responsibility. Everyone say resources. Everyone here has resources, but everyone here is not responsible. Not only with themselves, but with those resources. Here in Matthew chapter 25, we are seeing something that before we get to what was heard in your hearing today Jesus is somewhat chiding the saints who are watching him if you have a red letter Bible you'll see that this chapter is all red it's all red in the first part of the chapter he talks about the five, the ten virgins five wise and five foolish who all started with oil but some were not responsible with their resources. Somewhere down through time, they misplaced, they misused, and when it was time for the bridegroom to come, they had no oil. The truth of the matter is many of us have been irresponsible with the resources God has given to us. He then moves and he tries to make this concept a little bit more. He says, I can bring it to you in a couple of different ways, but in this point, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who gives to his labors something. So I want to slowly walk through this and then have communion. The first thing the Lord does is he reminds us that everybody has been given something. Look at your name and say, you've been given something. He said he, in verse 14, he said he called his own service and delivered his goods to them. Now, let's be clear. This verse tells us something. That first off, you've been given something because you should be his servant. But the something you've given don't belong to you. These are his goods. Look at your neighbor and say, do his goods good. One of the challenges that we have is when you think it's your good, you can do your goods bad, but you can't do his goods bad. He's given to everyone. And the thing that kind of throws people off, and I don't want you to get all caught up because he's trying to really teach a concept. He really wasn't even trying to get you caught up in all this stuff. He said, let's be clear. So let's, let's deal with another little thing that kind of makes this teaching a little different. We use the term talent different than he was using the word talent. When Jesus went to use the word talent, he wasn't talking about a gift or an attribute that you acquired either through nature or nurture. He was talking about money. He says because people really, whether you like it or not, uh, don't always know when they get their talent, their gift. But you can always tell when somebody comes into a bunch of money. <laughs> it's just, just how it is. Uh, it, it, you listen, you, you will hide your talent, but you won't hide your money. And when I say you won't hide your money, it don't mean you would give it to nobody, but you will spend it on something that will show you got money. And Jesus is trying to say, it's amazing to me that for me, everybody want to hide. But for the world, they'd be willing to show off. He was saying to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees, it's amazing to me, you got to put on your robe, but you won't put on righteousness. 
that, that you'll put on a form. It, it won't take on the love of the Father. And, and Jesus is trying to, to, to wrestle with us that we who are saved should not be about the show if our substance don't show that the show is real. See, one thing about money, money makes you live fake. It's easy to live fake when you got money. You, you can put on a facade that you got something and have nothing. And, and the Lord is trying to, rem he's really doing this teaching to tell our people, don't be sitting around with the goods and be up to no good. Don't, don't have stuff that don't lead you to be a, and do better stuff. He says, because ultimately, he, all that stuff belongs to me. He, he moves on, he says, he gives these talents, and he goes away. So let me go back to the word talent, because we think talent means gift, talent, acquired, either through nurture or through birth. Jesus isn't talking about money. He says, I know. And most people don't think Jesus ever talked about money. Jesus talked about money because he said, how do you know something about that? Y'all will forget me over money. He said, that's why he said, man can't love God and man. But what he was really saying, he said, I know the biggest fight I'm going to have with something you ain't the devil, it'll be the dollar. Because when the devil beating you up, you love God. But sometimes when the Lord bless you, you forget God. He was trying to remind them that my, my relationship with you is, is comes with a whole-throated, whole life policy. I want all of you. I don't want you just to have the outside right, but I want you to have anything that could affect the inside right. He moves and says, that's something. So, hope that got you there. Talents for God was money. We use the term talent. But I, for this sermon, you can talk about money or you can talk about goods, uh, gifts or attributes acquired through nature or through nurture. But then in verse number 16, he says, then the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. Jesus is establishing, first off, that everybody has something, but then he's also establishing that everybody can do something. Look at your neighbor and say, you can do something. He went and traded. Now, this is the thing I love about this. God is not even mad with who he traded with. There's a, there's a level of this that God knows we live in a world where everybody ain't saved. But unsaved people still do stuff. And there will be times that God will afford you an opportunity to make a relationship with someone who's not in the kingdom, not to be like them in the world, but to take the goods of the world and use them for the kingdom. This young man who had stuff said, I not only have stuff, but I, I see an opportunity. And here's the point that Jesus is trying to make when he does with the five guy, the two guy. He says, your resources will expose you to opportunities. The question is, will you be responsible to engage those opportunities? I want you to notice something. The five guy and the two guy don't fuss with each other. There's no debate with, you got more, you should do more. You got less. I don't have to do more. What this thing is showing, your opportunity, all God requires of you is to do what you can do with what you have. God is not expecting someone in college to do what a kindergarten does or what a kindergarten's done, what somebody in college does. He said, but let's be clear, kindergarten, you've got an opportunity to do some things. Do it. College, to whom much is given, much is going to be required of you, you've got to do it. And one of the sad things about it, we have raised kindergarten Christians who want to live college lives but don't want to be responsible with their resources. And Jesus was really trying to tell you that one of the things that deliverance does, deliverance don't just deliver you from the devil, it starts to discipline you from your own devils. That, that for, for, for most of us, God has no, I'm going to say this again, your biggest problem, mate, the devil, is you. That's why we have to have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost don't necessarily even help me with you. The Holy Ghost helps me with me. The Holy Ghost has to bring my desires. Can I just get the bishop going to be transparent? I ain't got much time. But I need to be transparent. Every day you've heard me talk, down through the years I talk about discipline desire. There are days I fall off the wagon. I just, you know, just had a birthday. You know, and the enemy being here, I don't know if it's the enemy, just maybe my ego. I don't even put that on the devil. Just maybe just me. I can get what I want to get. I can get what I want to get. I'm, I'm grown. I'm old and grown now. She can't tell me. You can't tell me. My mama don't tell me. My daddy don't tell me. 
And then God said, can I tell you? Come on, God, look at this. Come on, God. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Because we don't see responsibility as a sign of worship. We see it as, a, as an agony of sin. Can I tell you something? You have been assigned and anointed to produce. From the moment Adam was put on the ground, his first commandment was to be fruitful and multiply. God has no problem with you acquiring. He's nervous when you try to acquire to get his anointing. That when you realize everything you have come from God, you treat everything fruitful better because of God. So let me talk to you a few seconds. What do you mean? It's your breath in my lungs <laughs> that I pour out. Listen, it, 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 that, listen, this ain't my breath. This is your breath. It, you are the one who keeps me, and we say, clothed is my right. But I mean clothed. That, but some of y'all, there's clothes in your mind. <laughs> So whether you close or close, however you need it, it's the Lord who keeps you in your right mind. When you go down to eat your breakfast in the morning, I don't care how big the breakfast is, it was him who made you to have your daily bread. It might be dandy bread, wonder bread, it might be just a slim slice of bread, but can I tell you something? If he didn't give it to you, guess what? You would be fasting whether you wanted to or not. When you go to work, it's the Lord who keeps your mind and your body. It's he who gives you the ability. You, you, you don't work in your own energy. It's, it's him. If God wanted to just take it, if he wanted to just touch it, and that's why every now and then I, I realized one thing the Lord was helping me with. He said, let's be clear. If you want to be responsible, I can make you responsible for everything. And see, when my birthday came, I, I got a new pain. I, I can't seem to really shake it like I want to. I, I done tried to, I done, I'm working on it right now. I'm like, come on, Lord, you got to. It's like the Lord said, I'm going to help you remember that when you run things, run with that. <laughs> See? I, I had to understand that, that God has given me something. God has given me opportunity, and I better be careful with my responsibilities. But let's talk about the last guy. We'll be out today. <laughs> the Bible says that he did down around verse 23, he, he comes and gets these two who's done well. But the Bible said there was one who had one talent. Came and said, Lord, I knew you were hard, man. First off, this is what the devil would do. When you choose to be responsible, you misrepresent God. We sing a song in church, God is a what kind of God? Awesome God. What, what else we say he is? He's on time God, but all of a sudden when it comes down to your money, he's a hard God. When, when it comes down to the resource he's given you, he's a mean God. Look at your name and say, quit misrepresenting God. Now, I, don't, I, just, I promise this will come to another series, but the reason on time, because you think God don't need it. But if God take what you have, guess what you need God to give what you want. And the reason we don't tithe is we think it's mean. As a, and instead of saying it's a means for me to shine honor to God, I see it as a mean to look and make God seem mean. The Bible said, he said, I saw that you were a hard taskmaster. And he said, uh, reaping where you have not sown. <laughs> and this is the point that gets to me. You can misrepresent God seeing a truth. This verse says, you reap what you didn't sow. So, okay, now this is, I'm just trying to be biblical, so I want to walk this through. He says, I think you're a hard guy, and I kind of see your program. You take stuff from places you didn't put stuff. Now, this is what misrepresentation does. Well, how does God take something from somewhere he didn't put it, unless he owned it all? Now, let me use Brother Jerome. The Brother Jerome is, is one of my wonderful members who, who owned the restaurant. It's like him going to his restaurant, his restaurant, and getting one of his products off the shelf and somebody in the, in the thing says, hey, what you doing? Now, they work for him, but going to tell him what he can do with his stuff. And that's what 
we try to tell God, God, I, I know you'll bless me, but this is my stuff. The Lord is saying, if you know such of a hard mess and you know I own it all, why you didn't do something with it? Why you didn't do something with it? And Jesus even said, let's just be clear. He, he wants to get, I love this because this one was time that Jesus said, okay, since you want to be based, I'm going to be based on your faith with you. He said, listen. He said, when I was afraid, I went and hid your talent in the ground and look what is yours. And the Lord said to him, you wicked. See, I'm going to just tell some of you, the reason you don't want to be responsible is because you want to be wicked. See, it's, it's, I don't care what anybody says. I, I believe we are living in, this COVID has released talents and opportunities for people, but you also see some of the most wicked stuff going on right now. We just lost a little girl up in Orlando. We just found that girl over wickedness. And people are putting money into that wickedness. He said, you wicked servant. He said, uh, if, you, if you knew that I reap where I have not sown and have not scattered, he said, you should have at least deposited the money. With bankers, what the Lord's trying to tell some of you, if you won't be responsible, find somebody who will be. And I'm going to just be a, this, this, this Pastor Pell teaching point. The reason Pastor Pell ain't broke today is because I got a responsible wife. Now, I can make the resources, but I, I, I just told you, you know, I fight with me and my responsibility sometimes. I, I just got to follow. But can I just be honest with you? There are days in my life where I want to buy something crazy. And I have to say, God, since it all belongs to you and I want to do something crazy with it, let me hand it to somebody who will do something consecrated with it. See, part of being responsible is says, Lord, just be honest with me. Lord, there's some things about me that I'm afraid to do. I'm, I, I don't know how to do. And God, while I'm afraid, can you help me find somebody who will be faithful to do it? Now, I'm going to say something because this is where I'm going. I have an opportunity. Everybody has something. Everyone has an opportunity, number three, that many of us misrepresent God, even though you know the truth about God. Number four, if you won't, out of fear, give it to somebody who will, out of faith. That's what we just did here. He said, he said you could just give it to somebody who will do something with it out of faith. But let me close this, because let me, there's a misnomer I've got to walk with a little bit. Teaching point, that people have believed that, whether it be money or talent, that God, once he gives it to you, won't take it from you. So I want to talk and close with this. The scripture says the gifts and calling of God are without repenting. But it didn't say with still with his anointing. See, one thing about God, God will let you keep it and just won't touch it. See, Samson still was anointed, but guess what? Yeah, he still had the power, supposedly, but it wasn't his power. So when God said, when you're irresponsible with my resources, I can just take my hand off you. And when I take my hand off you, you can be skilled and still lose. I don't know what Samson did, but because clearly Samson would get the anointing back, so it ain't like God had to give it back to him. It was like he put his hand on him again. And I'm telling some of you, God is trying to help us in this season of overcomers. Take what you have and say, God, will you put your hand on it? It all came from you, God. I, I realize, God, that, that in me sometimes there's some desires that would disuse, would misabuse this money. But God, if you keep your hands on it, because God, if I have the money and you take your hand off the money, the Bible says it'll make yourself like wings. Everything will start breaking down. Everything will start breaking up. God don't have to take from you. He can let the world get you. That's why he said, when you don't tithe, he said, I ain't got to be nasty. He said, I send a little moth. Moth to eat a little hole. And you can put all your money in your pocket if you want to. It'll fall out that hole. I have a pair of pants I got to take to the tailor this week because I saw something. This past Saturday, I went and got a pair of pants with a hole in the pocket. I didn't even know. And I went and put the thing in my pocket and just one step, it fell out. And I thought to myself, Lord, what if I let fall out my pocket? Here's the thing. God will let it fall out and then let you forget that it fell out. Ain't nothing more aggravating than somebody finding your money. That you got, y'all know, tell me, in the house, somebody, who left $20? It's everybody $20 at that point. 
You almost got to go to people's court to get that $20 cell line. Judge Judy, will you help us? <laughs> Jesus says here, you ought to deposit your money with bankers at my coming. But look what the verse does say, because God will take your stuff from you. See, people have said he won't take it. Well, I got a verse that says maybe he will. Ask Saul, you was a king, I take the kingdom from you. Ask David, still anointed, I take the seat from you. And for some of us, and I say this with all conviction, that for some of us, we better come to a responsibility with the resources because God's going to take some things from you. He said, he took it from him, he's, and give it to him who has ten talents. There's nothing more, man. This, this, I just, I saw, this is just my picture of how my mama used to do me a victory. When I done done something, you know, you know I, I've, I've had a habit of kind of eating people's food when it's in the refrigerator for a while. This, this, ain't, this ain't no new. I, I ain't fully delivered from that. It just, and uh, so, so, you know, it'd be times, you know, mama would put something in the refrigerator, and she'd make enough for everybody. She'd even kind of section it off. But I kind of put people on the clock. I figured if you ain't ate it by now, you ain't eating it. You saw it sitting there. I saw it sitting there. You saw me eating mine. I figured that would motivate you to want to eat yours. <laughs> but, you know, they don't do it. And so, you know what I do? I assume that, okay, click, time is up. This, this. And my mama will let me eat my food and their food and turn around and make something for me and say, you can't have none of that. Come on, Victor. Come on, Dia. Y'all eat this. Man, but you prepared it for me. No, I prepared it for you to see. <laughs> I didn't prepare it for you. I prepared it for you to see. And nothing would aggravate me because they get that slow spirit. <laughs> you can't get none. Mama didn't make this for you. And she said, wipe your eyes. And you know, you be trying to bring the good tears. <laughs> she says, you abused, and now you know what it feels like to lose. See, when you, when you are not going to be responsible with the resources you choose to abuse, you're going to learn what it is to lose. He said, listen, you know, I, don't, I know people get these, take it from them. And give it to him who has no. Now, folks, let's just all be real, because this, this is just a human place. All of us get mad when God seems to be giving somebody more than giving you. Maybe you need to ask the question, why you ain't giving me more, God? Maybe it's not because he don't want to give you no more, but you won't be responsible. What would he give you? That you'll be a consumer, not a contributor. That you won't think kingdom, you'll think carnal. And when you think like that, God says, you don't know how to handle resources. Do something this morning. I'm over my time. I got a hundred dollars in this envelope. I want to give everybody who wants a dollar. I want to do an experiment. You got a whole month to figure out a way to make another dollar with this one dollar. All I ask is that it le it's legal <laughs> and biblical. And if somebody record you doing it, I ain't got to be on press, but I don't know who that member is. I have no idea who that is. I want you to know something, probably something in the first part of your mind. The reason some of you are really thinking about, do I want to be responsible? Let me tell you something again. We, we, the world is so messed up our mind. We don't really want to be responsible. Folks, I want to be saved. I want to be saved in my money. I want to be saved in my marriage. I want to be saved in my movements. And I don't have the time to misuse the, res the resources of God because time is winding up. So at the end of the service, I'm going to pray over this dollar. If you want to get a dollar, I'm, uh, Sister Bear, make sure we keep a record of who got the dollars. <laughs> I ain't get no dollar from you, Pastor. I don't know what you're talking about. But on the 31st, the last Sunday of the month, 
I want to do an experiment. You're going to have a day of reckoning. Now, I'm going to give you some examples because people say, man, Bishop, what can I do with a dollar? You may need to partner with someone who else has a dollar. Maybe that act you want to do may require more than a dollar. I don't. But the Bible says, can I give you something? There's a responsibility with resources. We are to spur one another on the good works. See, this, this is a discipleship moment. And then you can do something together. So let me just tell you what I'm thinking about doing. And I don't care if you do. I know I got a dollar. I'm going down to the dollar tree. I'm going to buy me a box of crayons. I got paper at home. I'm going to make me a sign. That's all you got. That's all I'm giving you right there. And I go from there. My dollar will produce another dollar from what I put on that sign. Teach them more. If you use what God gives you, God will give you more to use. It may not look like much. It may seem minimal, but as we just saying, you are more than a conqueror. You got to let the Lord touch your mind. I pray the Lord that you touch their minds. Open their minds that we will be responsible with resources. I pray over these dollars. Father, they won't bring nothing but glory to you. Father, there will be some who will come, and now there are some who will walk away. But I pray, oh God, that all whose lives will be touched by whatever we do, that we will all turn our glory to you. In Jesus' name. If you have your communion elements, if you would pull them out of your bag at this time. Thank you for doing this service at 930. I hope that you will find it just a, a confident time. Braden, I love you so much and thank you for being so patient with me, staying with me all over the house. So, Charlene, if you would come and take this time to open up. If you did not receive an element, Sister Tracy, you help me get her a microphone on from the front. Thank you. Folks, my sermon also comes for this point. We are always to be responsible with this resource. The scripture says that when you come to the Lord's table, you ought to first examine yourself. I've heard people say, well, Bishop, does that mean? What does that mean? First off, he said, you know you. There are times that you need to say, Lord, I won't partake in the Lord's Supper today. I don't judge. You know you. But it reminds us that we have two precious elements always available to make us overcomers. First is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That this bread re reminds us that Jesus took on human form to save us human forms. He was born in a manger. And you know, I like maybe a little bit now that it's a little bit smaller. God says, I was willing to get small to help you get bigger born in a manger. Think about it. If you drop this on the ground, some of us would have to look for days for it. God says, listen, it should be handled carefully. Because in this day, we're starting to get lost. The body of God is starting to get lost because we are not handling the body right. But then we come to the juice. Symbolizing the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for the body, but I know it was the blood that saved me. Yes. His body was broken, but if he had not bled, we wouldn't be blessed. So this morning, our intern will just do our prayer. And then we will partake in communion. Thank you, Jesus. Let us bow our heads. Father, my God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. God, as we partake in the Lord's Supper today, we pray, God, that we'll remember, God, what you have gone through for us. We pray today, glory to God, as we partake, God, of this wine, God, that is turned into your blood. As we partake, glory to God, into the bread that is your body, we pray, Father, that we will use it responsibly. We thank you today, God, for the remembrance. We thank you.
for this Lord's Supper. We thank you how you have shed your blood on Calvary's cross for us, God. We thank you today, God, that all our sins are nailed there. God, we thank you that as we do this today, God, we do it in remembrance, God, in commerence, God, in anticipation, Father, of being with you, God, one day at that feast, at that great banquet. Father, we thank you for your people today, God. We pray that you will continue to bless them and keep them and cover them, God. We thank you once again, God, for the remembrance of what you have done and your blood that you have shed for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you, eat ye all of it. Like man, he took the cup, he said, this is my blood, the sign of the new covenant, which is shed for the putting away of sin, drink ye all of it. said, as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you show forth my death till I come. Father, again, we thank you for your body. We thank you for your blood. And Father, even now, let healing go through this room. Father, that pressure, that pain, that ache, that even I talked about, oh God. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes we're healing. Father, we thank you that healing is still available. That, oh God, I pray you touch that mind that is troubled. That, oh God, on that night you said, peace I give to you, not as the world gives. God, now be that mind regulator. Father, help us always to handle this resource responsibly. So, Father, we love you today. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Why are you still standing? You might want to become a part of Rainy, the new 930 operations. So I'll open the door to the church at this time if there be one who would like to join Rainy at this day. Well, amen. You may be seated just for a moment. Well, it is my honor to have this wonderful couple come. Hey, let's give them a hand. I'm going to put my hands on you so I wait a second, my glove on. I'm going to pray with you with the sweet smelling oil from Jerusalem. As you stand before us today, it is your desire to join the House of Radiant Living Worship Center. If it is, say I do or we do. Have time. Do you publicly confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? If you do, say I do. Will you abide by the teachings of the House of Radiant Living Worship Center under the leadership of Bishop Pell, the Word of God, and the Church of God Minutes? If you will, say I will. Will you use your gifts and talents for the furtherance of the gospel? We use your temporal means and talents to truly be not only responsible to help others be righteous, if you will say, we will. House of Radiant, we have these wonderful people who've come before us today. And it is my wonderful duty to say that as they've stood before us and publicly confessed that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the Savior, that they will be submitted to the rule and leadership of the house, that they are in honor and in order to be members of the House of Radiant. So by the power invested in me, I welcome you to the House of Radiant Living Worship Center. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Got to pray for him first. We had a parade music. Let's listen to it. Pray that I need you to stretch your hands this way. Father, we thank you for new life. We thank you for fresh growth. We thank you, O oh God, that again, in your wisdom, you have grown. Father, I pray that you bless this wonderful couple. 
that, Father God, every gift and talent these hands have, oh God, that they will be used, oh God, to further the gospel. That, oh God, truly your name would be great in their lives, in their community. And that, Father God, you would be glorified. I pray now, oh God, that, God, you would give me insight and wisdom to see how those gifts and talents will be used to help the house of Raider. But, Father, as we're now standing two and three gathered together in your name, we need you to be in our midst. Bless them. Help us to bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tell us what your name is. My name is Fritz Lerderiska, and now everybody shorten it to Fritz. Fritz. <laughs> Nicola. <laughs> Let's welcome Fritz and Nicola and Andrew. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, oh, that's right, we, we ain't COVID, I'm sorry. Y'all gotta do the chicken wing. Y'all come on, do the chicken wing. I forgot all about that. Stand with me all over the house. Listen, I'll be up here if you want to join my dollar challenge. I'll be right here at the end of the service waiting to give you your dollar. Sister Bear, somebody, Sister B, to give me a sheet of paper with some names so I know who got these dollars. Tonight at 6 o'clock, if you would come, I need you to come prepare to do business with God. I really feel it in my soul if I don't fit an unction from God. That many of you are about to step into a season of just overflowing. And I believe the Lord set it up by saying we got to first off be careful and responsible with the resources so that we can truly have an overcomer's October. Why don't you lift your hands toward heaven. Father, I thank you that as we lift our hands, we ask you to anoint every last one. Father, there may be someone watching even online. We said, God, anoint those hands where they are. And Father, we pledge to use these hands responsibly this week. Father, we don't know the resources that you may let pass through our hands, but today, God, we make a vow. We won't bury it. We will use it that it will be a blessing. I pray now, God, that as we move from this place, we never move from your presence. That the angel of the Lord encamp himself about us in goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Now, Father, let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength. You are our soon coming redeemer. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen and amen. All who love the Lord said, amen. Give somebody the chicken wing and tell them, be responsible this week. Be responsible. <laughs>